Hey guys, welcome to American Beer TV. We're here at Bootlegger's fourth anniversary with Aaron, so the owner of Bootlegger's. So, how did how, you made it to four? Yeah. Congratulations on that. <laughs> you know, at another milestone passed. What was like? Um, what was the best thing about the past year for Bootlegger's? Past year, it's a, there's been a lot of changes in the last year. We, uh, we switched distributors and, and we've grown uh, more than doubled over the last year. Nice. And uh, yeah, we've just been super busy. I bet. Uh, but busy in a good way. Cool. Uh, how many barrels did you do last year? Uh, last year we did 2,800. And wow. right now we're on track for at least 5,500. Wow. We got some more uh, capacity coming in. so. I'm expecting about 8,500 this year. Yeah, I mean, every time we go into bootleggers, there's another two or three tanks <laughs> hanging out there, so we've we've noticed that. But uh, well, we're actually moving. Are uh, you? Yeah, we're gonna we're moving to two new facilities in Fullerton. Wow, and, two uh, facilities. Yeah, yeah, okay. we're gonna actually move our tasting room into downtown Fullerton. Okay. And we'll have a brewery, a pilot brewery there, uh, where we can kind of experiment and do different things. Right. And then uh, our production brewery is also going to be in Fullerton, but more in an industrial area. I see. And uh, that won't be open to the public except for uh, tours. Okay. So, and that's where we'll do a lot of the packaging, the bottling, right. you know, uh, most of our, our uh, production. Right. right there. So then for the next year, basically, that, that sounds like a pretty ambitious move, so the next year probably... That's your focus is taking care of both of those moves. That's a, a lot. It's bad enough to move once. Yeah, moves. next three, four months is uh, is going to be pretty busy for us. I bet. So, I bet. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So you got any new? Uh, I mean, you've got some great, amazing beers. I think, you know, I was just talking about your sours here. Um, I think your sours have been one of my big things that I've been a fan of, and they've been getting more sophisticated. A little, you know over the years yeah and, but still amazingly sours what's been your favorite beer that you made this past year this last year I'm pretty proud of our anniversary beer okay the 79 uh, 79 yeah it's a Belgian style red ale and uh, I think it's a pretty you know good easy to drink uh, beer with you know a lot of complexity and uh, I think it's got a, a lot of good flavors to it very cool and, awesome yeah Got anything you want to key us in on that you're coming up with for the next year? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a no. <laughs> we, uh, well, some of the stuff that's here today are kind of sneak peeks of, you know, bigger runs that we're going to be doing in the future. Cool. Uh, one of the, the new IPAs that we, we did, uh, Far Out IPA, okay. is uh, made with Galaxy Hops. Okay. And, um, and that one uh, is is an awesome idea. You uh, really got to try that while you're here. We'll do. We'll do. Now the Galaxy, aren't Galaxy hops from like New Zealand or something? Australia. Australia. Yeah. Okay, I was close. Yeah. So, so they, they actually their harvest I think is in like June or something July. Okay. Um, so it's kind of the off cycle from our harvest here in like September. That makes sense. It yeah. makes sense to pull them up from there and yeah. focus in. So yeah, it's got a lot of tropical fruit notes to it and. Uh, kind of juicy fruit flavors and nice I mean it, yeah you really gotta try it it's awesome. very very cool definitely we'll make it a point to get to it so man thanks so much for having us out and yeah. uh, making great beer and uh, we'll see you uh, next year on the fifth awesome <laughs> awesome Cheers. man thanks hey guys so this is the beer that Aaron was just talking about here now we're at the Muckenthaler uh, Center here in Fullerton you can see that view back there uh, pretty impressive so that's where their fourth anniversary is so this is the beer that he was just telling me about this is their far out IPA it's using galaxy hops and I'll tell you what I've never had a nose on an IPA like this one I don't think maybe maybe palate record but this is when he was saying it was really citrusy and full of juicy fruits and just real mango grapefruit hop characteristics this has got it in spades, man. This is a really, really aromatic IPA. You know, uh, man, it is probably one of the, I'm, I'm in love with just the aroma on it. This is, I haven't even tasted it yet. It's a killer. So, uh, going in for the flavor on this. 
wow. That is, it, it tricks you. This is a, uh, wow. Um, this is probably the, one of the most bitter IPAs, but it's, see the nose is all citrus and guava and mango and tropical fruits and like that. But the, the mouthfeel is just pure dank bitterness. It's, 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 it's a sledgehammer. So that's, that is one intense motherfucking IPA right there. That is hardcore. You hopheads out there, get your hands on this far out IPA. You're going to dig it. It's fucking far out. So, wow. That's impressive. This is Frank. And he's one of the locals at Bootleggers, and he's one of the ones that helped us with that bottle share. We've got some videos up uh, just a little bit ago. So. Hopefully, I was behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, if you hang, come down to Bootleggers, you'll see Frank hanging out, say hi, and you know he's he's got some great beers. So, so does Bootleggers. Cool. This yeah. is one of the uh, breweries classics. It's uh, the '78 Bourbon Barrel. Nice. '79 was not uh, treated in the bourbon barrels. This one right. was. It has such a nice, clear, distinct taste of bourbon without being sharp, without being overpowering. Right. Just, it, it's almost like um, you're drinking a shot without the hard alcohol. The hard hit. edge. Right. So yeah. this was last year's uh, anniversary ale. And so what they did with that, they took the rest of that, put it in bourbon. Barrel. 78 comes from uh, the number of years between the repeal of Prohibition and today. Hence the bootleggers. So. Uh, let's go in and test this one. I mean, I believe the the 78, and I'll find out some more information and present it. I believe it's like about a 9% old ale. So it's got lots of malt, got some fruity characteristics. Uh, it's almost got a sour note. Wow, that's really unique. It's kind of got it's it's got a lot of bourbon flavor to it. It's also got some sour notes. Um, like kind of that sour mash bourbon, where they they let it, um, they let the the mash for sour mash bourbon they let the mash just sit for a while and the enzymes, you know, create kind of a a sour effect. This has a bit of that. Um, I know Bootleggers has some amazing uh, sour beers. We're gonna get into some of those, but it's got a little bit of that sour quality to it really unique to find in a bourbon but it really the bourbon notes really come through so like kind of like a like Frank was saying this is what Frank was drinking just a minute ago this is kind of like a real hit of bourbon but without that hard edge so real nice beer so very cool hey guys so I'm here with one of uh, bootleggers sours now one of the things from the first day I walked into bootleggers I was impressed with their sour beers because they're making beers that uh, you know was pretty unusual at the time uh, so it seemed like they were really adventurous with that and so their sour programs gotten even more robust more dialed in and I want to say more nuanced and that's true to an extent but also just really bold sours so this is their sour number three unfortunately that's about all I know on it but the nose on this is is amazing I'm picking up green apple sour green apple like that tart green apple I'm picking up tons of that I'm picking up vinegar I mean it's just amazing to me I, the green apple is what I'm picking up that think of those those sour green apple candies yeah it smells just like that let's go ahead and taste that Wow holy shit that is whoa that is probably the most sour, tartest beer I've come across, and that amazingly sour. Now that my palate has been punched with that, let me see if I can get uh, a little more um, flavor nuances on that. Wow! It just, I was <laughs> trying to hold off, because once you swallow it, it's just a burst of sour. It just it just assaults your, clears your sinuses right out. Getting some green apple, but I mean, it, this is just getting some of that apple, but mostly this is just pure fucking sour. Just gonna wreck your palate. So it's some good stuff, though. I enjoy that. 
I find that really refreshing and crisp and drinkable. But this is a little more than crisp. It's pretty sharp, but it's good stuff. So that's sour number three from Bootleggers. So now we'll uh, have to try to find their sour number four. Hey right, guys, so uh, we're just tasting sour number three. Now we're going on to sour number four. Uh, I think this is about the fifth beer so far. Uh, doesn't matter, we're losing track. Last year I tried to keep track. This year, yeah. Um, as we can see, uh, this one's a little darker than the sour number four. Um, the sour number four looked a little like a Hefeweizen. This is a little darker and a little more clear. So let's go in and see if I can get a nose on this. Yeah, real vinegary, but a little, uh, a little more raisiny, a little more dark fruit. Um, the sour number three had more of this green apple. This is a little more uh, dark fruit cherry type stuff. So again, they just say sour number four. They don't tell us really what style or anything. So let's let's taste this. Wow. Again, real real sour. Um, I think the, the use of a little dark darker malts and the darker fruit tones on this. Um, makes it taste not quite as crisp or refreshing as um, the sour number three but they're both real sour I think I think uh, the lightness of sour number three uh, causes the sourness to come through a little a little more this one's a little a little more hearty a little more dense so uh, takes a little more to the sour but I mean their sour program has gotten much much more sophisticated. Uh, over the years so really it but they don't bottle any of them you have to get down to the brewery to try them they don't keep them on very long uh, so that's re really why you know coming out to a bootleggers event like this you really get to try some of these these sour beers and if you're a sour fan they're worth it so definitely hey guys so this is we're going something a little different this is their uh, 76 anniversary so this was probably um, 78 was their third anniversary. 79 is this year's. So 76, this must have been from their first year anniversary. And then they've um, they've aged this on cherries. So getting a little bit of a fruity nose. Mostly some sourness. Some vinegar qualities. Um, let's see what it tastes like. Wow, that's really complex. There's multi notes, there's fruity notes, there's sour notes. Um, you know, real dark fruit like dates and figs. Because most of their anniversaries from what I know, from what I believe, are kind of an old ale style or a Belgian red ale. But more on the malty side of beer, so you you are picking up a lot of sweetness in this, um, and this has been matured for a very long time. So really, really complex beer. This is fantastic. So their uh, 76th anniversary on cherries, really killer. So hey guys, so what would be uh, a bootleggers anniversary without some knuckle sandwich? So this is their double IPA. If you are watching this, and you, that means you know about bootleggers, probably. And if you know about bootleggers and you don't know about Knuckle Sandwich, then I don't know where you've been. Because Knuckle Sandwich is like their biggest hit. So this is a double IPA, lots of sweet caramely malt right up front, and then the hops come. 10% alcohol, this is a heavy hitter, so cheers. Yep, real nice, sweet, caramely but it's got that, you know, hoppy backbone to it. That is that blend between malty and hoppiness that that we all just love. So there we go. We've got the knuckle sandwich. So Bootleggers is here. The brewery's here. This is their collaboration, Chocosaurus Rye. It's a stout with, with cocoa nibs and rye. Um, it's got a real... And, you know, it's got a real chocolatey nose, that kind of creamy chocolatey nose that, that cocoa nibs provide. It's some real good stuff. So uh, let's give this a shot. Wow. 
Wow. That's like pure, nice, dark cocoa. That's really good. So, oh man, real nice. A little dry at the end, but for the most part, just a nice example of chocolate in a beer. Kind of a, a, a roasty style with some rye. That's probably what gives it that dryness, that rye. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not picking up any Belgian strains. From the brewery, I would expect a Belgian strain, but I'm not sure if that's in there. But really, really nice beer. If you have some of this, hang on to it. I'm sure this will age really nicely. Brewery and bootlegger collaboration, OC. Very, very cool. So. Hey guys, so we've got the uh, Galaxian Barley Wine. Now, based on what uh, Aaron was telling me earlier about their Galaxian hops, Galaxy hops, I'm presuming that this is a barley wine primarily aged, made with Galaxy hops. Galaxy hops are from uh, Australia, and they have an opposite growing cycle as we do. So on during our off season, there is where their on season is, and so they're able to get it. Now, this is the same style of hop that was in the, uh, uh, what? I can't remember the name of the IPA. Off limit? Something like that. Uh, IPA. Um, which was really citrusy in, in nose and really dank and earthy in, in flavor. So let's see how this part of the wine comes out. It does have the maltiness of a barley wine, but it certainly has a hoppy characteristic. This is much more mellow than that IPA. Much more mellow. But it is a good blend. It's got some malt, but it's got a good amount of hops as well. It's pretty nice. Overall, a really nice hoppy barley wine. Hey guys, so again, another signature beer from Bootleggers is their Black Phoenix, a Chipotle, a, a Chipotle, uh, a, an Imperial Russian style brew with Chipotle pepper. Uh, now, what happens when you take a Imperial Russian style brew with Chipotle peppers and age it on bourbon? You get this. That's what this is. Bourbon barrel aged Black Phoenix. So. We're gonna go in, it's definitely got that wonderful coconut, caramely, vanilla, bourbon barrel aged stout nose. But there is the heat. The heat is still there. Not, not heat, not the essence of heat, but a little bit of that pepper flavor. There's a smidge kind of comes through and it keeps it from being such so like sweet and luscious as a bourbon barrel aged stout would normally be that pepper says no 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 hey it's got some chipotle in here so that's that's what it's doing um, but overall it's a really really nice experience pretty darn good stuff so this is bourbon barrel aged black phoenix oh. <laughs> so this is, this is the 79th anniversary. This is the Bootleggers' 79th anniversary, and we're gonna give it a shot right now. Down it. So it's the last of it. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> That's a really nice. They said uh, Aaron said at the beginning. This was a Belgian red. You can definitely taste the Belgian yeast strain in there. A little bit of maltiness. Not very much hops going on. Oh, that one, that one did come out. I like that one better. Just a tiny bit of hops at the end. But still, a great, great beer. Bootlegger's fourth anniversary. There we go.